There are three topics I like talking about in web design. The first is about accessibility, because I also have a known disability, so that makes me appreciate it more. The other is about creating cool layouts using custom CSS. And finally, about dynamic data. And that is what we're going to be focusing on today. So I'm going to be showing you one new plugin I've been testing out, which is really powerful and helps you use dynamic data in a whole new way. So if that's something that interests you, then stick around and I'll show you the plugin. The plugin we'll be looking at today is called Dynamic Shortcodes. It was created by Dynamic U, the same company behind Dynamic Content for Elementor and Dynamic Visibility for Elementor, which are two powerful plugins that help you to use dynamic data in an extended way within Elementor, which is not currently possible with the native way. But this plugin, it goes beyond Elementor. It allows you to pull in any dynamic data from any source. So it could be your posts, your products, your terms, it could be ACF, Metabox, Jet Engine, Pods, or any other source, and then you can pull it into any page builder. Yeah, you heard me right, any page builder. So you could work with your full site editing, it can work with your classic editor with Gutenberg, your Generate Press, your Cadence, or any other block based editor. It also works with any page builder. So it works with Elementor, it works with Breakdance, Oxygen. And then soon it's also be integrated into Bricks. So you can use this power of this plugin within any page builder of your choice. So in today's video, I'm going to show you five use cases in which I found this plugin useful. And I hope that one of those use cases is also beneficial to you. So now let's jump right into it. Before we jump into the use cases, first let's take a look at the syntax. It starts with a curly brace, then it has an identifier. That identifier is like the general thing you're trying to pull the data from. So it could be your post, like you see in the example, this is post. It could be products, it could be like an arithmetic symbol, like multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, anything like that. It could be like a condition, so if, switch, a loop, the for statement, anything. So that is basically what identifies what the whole syntax is going to be about. Then after that, we have arguments. So in the case of the post, what are we trying to do with the post? The arguments that are involved with the post is that we're trying to pull in the excerpt. You could also be trying to pull in your title or your featured image or anything from the post. Then to make it a bit more specific, you add in another option. So that is in this example, we want to get the post excerpt. If you just put post excerpt, it will take from the current post. But if you don't want it from the current post, you now add an ID of 21. That is the post ID. Then once you've pulled that in, you can go further to filter the result. So in this case, I'm getting the excerpt, but to get the full excerpt, but what if we just want the first 20 characters so we can filter it using any native WordPress function, or we can use our own. Here, I'm using the WP trim words to trim it to only the first 20 words. Then after I filtered it out, what if the dynamic data doesn't have any results? So what do we do there? We can add in a fallback. So to add in a fallback, you use a question mark symbol, and then you put in your string or your number or another short code in there. So this is the string here. So it will show this is just a placeholder if there is no post excerpt for that post. So that is the syntax. So now let's jump into the five use cases. The first use case, evergreen dates. A friend of mine, Eddie Verda, mentioned how he was unhappy that the kind of posts that tend to do well in Google search are posts that are actually outdated. So let's show an example like he showed here about Elementor review. So let's go ahead and test it out ourselves and see what happens. So here we are on Google. Let me go ahead and search for what he searched. Elementor review 2024 and see what comes up at the top of the search results. As you can see, this is saying Elementor Review 2024. But if you look at when it was posted, it was posted in October 2023. That's a YouTube video. But let's see even the actual Google search. You see this WPE cube? It shows that this is an honest review in 2024. You also see WP Crafter. It says it was created in February 2024. But now look at the date it was published. This is January 2024, okay, which is this year. 
The other one shows August 2023, which was not, that means it was only posted in 2024. And it's showing that it's a review for February 2024. Let's now go ahead and even open it up. You see, it shows that it's a review for 2024. That means it's showing the current year, but you would know just by looking through the blog post that this was not created in 2024. Because first of all, this is not the layout used by Elementor anymore. It was changed way back in April 2023, which I'll show you now on their developer docs. Let me go ahead and just, you see, it shows the Elementor editor facelift was done way back in March 2023. So that is way back, but yet their blog post which shows 2024 is still showing those old layouts. So that means that post was not written in 2024, but the only thing is that it keeps getting updated automatically. So now let me show you how you can do that for yourself. Here is a post I created. This is a dummy post. It shows Elemental Review 2023. But you see the year currently is showing 2023. But we want it to always show the current year. So how can we do that using dynamic shortcodes? All we have to do is, like I said, start with the curly braces. Then you start with what are you trying to achieve? That is the date. So date. And we're trying to pull in the current date, so we just say now. And then what kind of format? We want it to be more specific. We don't want all the values of the date. We just want one part of the date, which is the year. So format equal to Y. And when we publish it and preview it on the front end, it now shows Elementor Review 2024. And it even updates in my breadcrumbs as Elementor Review 2024. See, that's how we can get the current year and it will always update following the current year. It's also good when you're trying to put in something like your copyright at the bottom of your page. You just write that date now, and then you put the format that you want it, and it will always show that format. So the beauty of it is that, you know, like, for example, you see all these gaming platforms, you see like um, football for 2024 or 2025. By the September of 2024, you start to see them promoting the 2025 game already. So how can we show a date in the future? It's quite easy. All you have to do is remove this now and then just use a kind of function there. So what I'm trying to pull in now is the date plus, let me say, so that it shows the next year, I'll just say plus 12 months. It accepts months, days, years, anything you want. So let me update it and then we'll go ahead and preview it again. Now you see it shows 2025 because I put it one year in advance. So that's how powerful you can do it. So after you've done it like this, you can now go a step further if you have an SEO plugin, like I'm using Rank Math in this case. So if you go to Rank Math, then go to Edit Snippets to change your title of your page. So you can just say Elemental Review and then use the macro, which is called Current Year. And see, it will also show you your current year, which is 2024. So that's how you can combine both of them together. And on Google, it will show you 2024. When the person opens the post, it actually shows 2024. But the post wasn't actually written in 2024. Then finally, you can now add in another plugin, which will help you to simply republish the post on a yearly basis, like what WP Cube does. So at the first of every January, it republishes that Elementor review post so that it always makes it look evergreen. So that is how you can make your post evergreen. And that is the first use case for the Dynamic Shortcodes plugin. The second use case is personalized greeting. So here we have an example again. I'm following the same blog post. And here I wrote, hi reader, how are you today? So what if you want to reference the reader's either display name or first name? and you want to do it dynamically, you don't want to be writing that for each user. So you can use the dynamic shortcodes again in this case. This works in any page builder, so I'm just using Gutenberg here, but it works in Elementor, it works in Breakdance. I'll show you some examples in Elementor as well. So let's go ahead. So rather than saying, hi reader, we now use a shortcode to pull in the user's first name. So what we're trying to target is the user. So we'll start with user, put a column, and we're trying to get the first name. So first underscore name, if I can spell right. Then I always like to put in a fallback. So I'll put in a question mark and say reader. 
So if it cannot find that data, then it just defaults to reader so that it doesn't leave a blank space there. So update, and now let me preview it. And you see, it shows my first name, which is David. If you want it to show the display name rather than the first name, you can come back and change it from first name. You can use last name, you can use display name. And then let me publish it and then we review it. See, it shows, hi, Dave Den. If you see at the top, that's the name there, Dave Den. And then let me show you on a private window. So I'll open a private window now. And then let's preview it. See now, it shows high reader. If there's no display name to pull in, then it goes to the fallback name. So that's another cool use case for the dynamic shortcodes. You can also pull in some other dynamic data to create a user dashboard. So let me show you one dashboard. This is just an example for your editors. So let me show you the front end. This is just a template. So here I'm pulling in the total number of subscriber counts. So there are only 12 subscribers registered to this website, which is just a demo website. Then this user has created 26 posts. So this is personalized to this user. If you open another user's profile, then you see a different value there. Then you can go ahead to see his profile using a form editor. That's what this is using a form editor, not dynamic shortcodes, but everything ties together. So we can pull in dynamic data here. And then when we update it, everything updates. And we can pull in, see here, I'm pulling in the first name, the last name of this user or the author. I'm also pulling in the nickname of the author. And you can pull in so many other dynamic data that you want to form a very beautiful user dashboard. The third use case is crediting your co-authors. So let's say you have a blog post that was written by multiple people or just want to reference one of your authors Maybe they said something and you want to just quote that in your blog post and you want to be able to use their name dynamically so you don't make mistakes in their name. You want to pull in the name that is written in their user profile. So maybe they eventually change their name one day. You don't want to have an error where some parts are showing one name and the other parts is showing a different name for the same person because some people may change their name when they get married and things like that. So let's say you want to make it to be a dynamic name. In this example, you see I'm writing David Denedo, which is a static name. But if I want it to be dynamic, then I can use a short code. Since I'm trying to pull in details from some other user, then I have to put it in a power short code. If it's from the current user, then I don't need that. But from another user, I have to use a power short code. And to do that, you have to say power because it has to be done by the administrator. Then all I have to write is author. Then the way I've created it is the options that you have are what is the name of the user? Ideally, you're supposed to get the ID of the user, but I've made the short code to be easier to read. So what is the name of the user? Just the first name that I have assigned because those are assigned somewhere else. I assigned those names. So each name has been assigned to its post ID. So let's say I'm trying to get David's name and what are the fields I'm trying to pull in? So let's say field equal to Let's say I'm trying to pull in only the first name. So say first underscore name. Let me publish it. Let's see how it looks on the front end. So right now it shows that it was brought up by David. So if I want the last name, I can change it to last name. If I want the full name, I just say full name, update it, and then let's refresh the page. See, now it's pulling in my full name, David Denedo. So that's how you can pull in any information you want, the full name, the first name, display name, the last name, but make sure that you try to restrict it so that the editor who is writing your blog post cannot just pull in any information. That's why it's in a PowerShot code. You have to limit it so that maybe you want to prevent him from being able to get users with a specific role. Maybe you only want him to be able to show up users with the role of maybe subscriber or the role of maybe editor. But any time he tries to pull in data from an administrator, you put it a fallback, which shows that this is not allowed or something like that because you're trying to be a bit security conscious. So you can add that into the PowerShot code, but I'm not doing that in this example. But that's how you can get your name to be a 
dynamic name. So let's show another example of another user I have. So let me try another user. This time I'll say maybe bright. And let me refresh the page. I see it pulls in the dynamic data for that other user. And you can pull in the information that you want from the users that you have put in the allowed list within the PowerShot code. The fourth use case is post loop with clean code. A while ago, I showed a comparison between Elementor's loop grid and Jet Engine's listing grid, where I had the twig templates active. And I showed you how you can massively cut down the code when you're using the twig view. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the dynamic shortcodes, and that also allows you to create clean code as well. And you don't need Elementor Pro for it. You can use Elementor Free. For this example, all I'm using is dynamic shortcodes to pull in my post loop. So let me go ahead and recreate it. But first, let me show you how it looks like on the front end. So you see, we have our loop. And if you go in and inspect it, you see the code is exactly as I created it. It doesn't have any extra data that I don't need. It is using the UL tag, the LI tag, and whatever I decide that I want to use. So let's go ahead and see how to recreate it. I've already put the CSS and the PowerShot code in the back end, but let's see how powerful it is for your users to pull it on the front end. So all you have to do is you create all the hard work in the back end. Then when you give it to your users, all you have to do is just pull in some simple data and they get this. So let's go ahead and do it now. I'll delete the short code I have here. All you need is a widget that allows you to pull in dynamic data. You don't need Elementor Pro for this. You can work with Elementor Free as well. So we go ahead to the dynamic tags. I'm using the HTML widget because I don't want anything to mock up with my code. Then when you go down to the bottom, you see a new one called dynamic U, dynamic shortcodes. You click on that. Then click on the wrench icon. And within this, I will now pull in my query. Because it's a query, which is pulling in data that is powerful, we have to put it in a power shortcode, which was designed in the back end already. So to show the shortcode, we'll start with the curly braces. Then we'll put the identifier, which is power, with the colon. Then what am I trying to pull in? The name I'm using is post listing. And immediately it pulls in the list of posts. Right now it's pulling in only six posts. I can choose how many posts I want to pull in. And I can also choose the kind of skin I'm using. Right now it's using the post list skin. So let me show you. All you have to do is say add to put in the options. Then I'll say skin equal to, I created a lot on the back end. So you can use the classic skin, so classic. And then it pulls in the classic skin. If I want something different, maybe I called another one, I think, Moz skin. And then it pulls it like this. Next, how many columns do I want on desktop, mobile, and tablet? So I'll say on desktop, I want it to be three. So using CSS grid, which I'm using core frameworks in this example to pull in some utility classes. If I want it to be four, I just say four. And then it uses a display grid to make it four. But let's just use three. You can also pull in data from a specific post type. Right now it's pulling from posts. You can choose post type and choose the post type you want. But there's no need to do that in this example. And then all of these, so let's change the skin. If I want classic skin, it's a different design. This one doesn't have the label of the categories. So you can create multiple skins for your users, kind of like the posts widget, but this time you are creating it yourself. And if you don't want to write the code yourself, you can actually use an Elementor template again. So you can create an Elementor template, then pull in all the dynamic data you want, and then write a short code for it. So you can literally use Elementor Pro without Elementor Pro. That's a cool idea. So that's it for this example. I remember in the Elementor Facebook group, someone asked a question previously about how she can also create like a listing of her posts, but rather than in a card format, 
she wants to do it in an accordion format so you can click on the post title and then it displays the excerpt you can also do that here as long as you know the css and the javascript and the html you want to write so right now i already created one and the name was accordion so let's see and see i created an accordion so let me publish it because it's using javascript it will not work in the preview it will work only in the front end so let's go ahead so now you see it opens and it closes like a real accordion and this is the post title and this is the excerpt so you can do whatever magic you want using the short codes and you don't have to write php yourself all you're doing is writing kind of like you're writing the twig then just pulling in your html within it and you get whatever you want another really cool feature is that it works well with wp grid builder so you can actually filter your posts using wp grid builder i already created a filter code here where you have to write code yourself i, I hid it using dynamic visibility so let me unhide it and unhide the pages one as you can see if you go to the content all we're doing is just pulling the short code for our WP Grid Builder. This is the short code format. Then the next thing we have to do is give this a class name of WP GB content. So let's give it a class name. So under the wrench icon, I'll just come over to the end and say class equal to WP GB content so that they can link up together. Then right now you see they are showing only six posts. If you want more posts per page, you can actually just say post per page equal to maybe 12 or something. You see now we're pulling in 12 posts. So I'll publish it. Now let me go over and see how the front end now. As you can see, right now we have 12 posts showing up at once. We have our pages. There are three pages. And the filters, if you say general, now it's filtering for only the general posts. If you want music, it is filtering for the posts with just music and so on and so forth. If you want business, you get only three posts that are for business. And that's how powerful it is. So it works with WP Gribble very well. And you can get your posts in your archive page using WP Grid Builder and the dynamic short codes and you get your clean code how you want. The fifth use case is media library listing. So here we have the media where I use happy files and it created a folder called people. I want to pull in all the images from this folder. All I need is the term ID. So click on this I icon and you see the term is 46. So that's the number we're going to be using. So all I'll do is use a short code I've created. So go back to the edit screen. Now I'll drop in another HTML widget. That's my favorite widget. Then click on the dynamic tags, go down to the dynamic short codes, click on the wrench icon. And this time I use the power because it's a query again. And this time it's media, so media, listing so i'll put an at term id equal to the value i think it was 46. you see i'm pulling in my people then i can style it however i want using custom css so basically i can pull in data from a specific folder i can even go further so let me use another example i created a different short code so power listing three and from the folder i put a default folder that is my downloads folder which you can see from here the download folder is 39 so that's the id that is there or you can change the id to at id that's term id i mean equal to 46 again you can see all of them are from on splash you can download them by clicking you to download the image for you, but I'm not going to click anything. It shows you all the information you want. So it uses a serial number. This serial number is created using one of the variable functions. So you can create a loop 
of numbers that just keeps looping and then adding one number to it. So that's why it created these numbers. It shows the name of the file. If you can go there, see the name is there. That's the same name here. It shows you what's the format. All of them are in WebP. So that's the format. It even shows you the size of the file. So you can do so many powerful things using this plugin. So let me show you on the front end. So now let's go down. You can see these are all the files and you can download any of them. So if I click on it, it downloads the file for me. And that's how you can create a folder for your downloads. So let's say you have like how, you know, these authors of these plugins, they have the downloads. They can just literally just post the file there into that media folder and then it updates it automatically as you can order them by name, the size, by anything. So you can create your shortcode to do anything you want. So in a future video, I'm going to be showing you from simple cases to more complex cases, how you can use the Dynamic Shortcodes plugin. And if you have any requests, please leave them in the description. If you have any compatibility issues, you can reach out to the devs and they are quick to respond. They will get back to you in no time. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has shown you how powerful the Dynamic Shortcodes is. It works with WooCommerce as well. So if you have your WooCommerce products, you want to display any of the information on your front end, you can do that. I'll leave a link to two other people's videos who went in depth in WooCommerce and other areas. So this was just to show you some of the use cases that I found personally and I, I enjoyed. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.